I can hardly believe my eyes. You didn't have to do this, you know. Risk your life just to save mine. No, I expect they didn't. You're a force of nature, aren't you? You've left the board in tatters, but Halcyon is still on the verge of starvation. I just hope we're not too late. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. 
I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. Earth isn't going to help us. No one's going to help us now. We're alone out here, and I don't know if we're going to survive. I had hoped your fellow colonists might hold the key to saving Halcyon, but I don't have nearly enough chemicals to revive them all. I'll do what I can. I just hope it's not too late. It's time I return to my lab. I'll try to save as many of the Hope's colonists as I can. You're under no obligation to help me. You've done enough already. I only hope you know what you're getting into. There isn't much of a colony left to run. We were going to save this colony, you know. That's what I told myself when I pulled you from the Hope. You and I were going to set everything right. Now, I don't know what to think. Earth is gone, and we are going to need a miracle to survive another generation. I always suspected Halcyon might collapse one day. I just... I just thought we would have more time. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists, engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. As the colony struggled to survive, the inspirational story of the iconoclast spread like wildfire, and Graham was able to bring many of the smaller Terra 2 townships into the fold. However, his zealous obsession with spreading the word blinded him to the needs of a growing organization, and the movement was unsustainable at scale. The iconoclast way seemed to work best, and ultimately petered out on Monarch. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. As for Reed Thompson, 
It was said that he lasted exactly two days outside the walls of Edgewater. Years later, a marauder was found in possession of his hat. Under the leadership of June Lake Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave June Lake the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people. Sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Millstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker. And Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and June Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He was never able to come to terms with his own past, troubled by the decision of placing all his faith in the first colonist he ever revived, the infamous Captain of the Unreliable. The revival project yielded mixed results. Phineas, weighed down by limited support and his own guilt, struggled to revive more than a handful of scientists and engineers. They made a heroic effort to solve the colony's problems, but with small numbers and facing long odds, their solutions never caught on. Only a few of the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Wells died before he could see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a haunted man, crushed by the guilt of his failures. Small, petty factions squabble over what remains of the colony. Every attempt to reach out to Halcyon's neighbors is met with silence. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and proved yourself the most capable leader left in the colony. You administered the colony in your own image. With the old power of the board destroyed, 
a new government of Halcyon rose with you at its center. With your steady hand, you guided Halcyon through the turbulent years that were to follow and helped ensure the survival of the colony until the end of your days. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.